This is Let's Talk Big, the Big Read with Jane Berger and Jen Hazel. The Owens Community College Campus Read is taking place now and throughout the semester with the goal of bringing awareness of different perspectives through books. The Campus Read book is Carrie, a Memoir of Survival on Stolen Land, from 2020 recipient of the NEA Creative Writing Fellowship, Tony Jensen. It's a memoir in essays about gun violence, land, and indigenous women's lives. Now sharing passages, topics, and events related to the book, Carrie, a Memoir of Survival on Stolen Land, is Owens Community College Director of Library Services, Jane Berger, and Professor of English, Jen Hazel. I'm Jen Hazel, and I have with me Jane Berger, and we are here as your express team to talk about the big read. Today, we have a passage. Jane? Page 20. We're early in the book. The small towns where I grew up, where my family settled in the States, where my father still lives, are in Audubon County, Iowa. The hills there roll and roll, and the rivers cut through like snakes or ribbons, depending on the vantage point. The county is named for John James Audubon of bird painting fame. His avian watercolors are legendary. It's less well known that he was born in what was then St. Domingo, now Haiti, on his father's sugarcane plantation. So she goes on to talk a little bit more about history of where she grew up in Audubon. And then, as we scroll down a little bit, and I want you to pay attention to see if you notice anything as you continue to read. Pages 20 and 21, actually, were early in the book. Though the word meti doesn't join the lexicon until 1816, at least, according to Webster's, it too first defines the people by European concept of, quote, mixing, as a, quote, person of mixed blood, unquote, and adds, especially often capitalized, the offspring of an American Indian and a person of European ancestry. So she uses Webster's quite a bit throughout her book. So I'm asking our listeners and readers to pay attention to that. And there's something else that she often makes reference to. We'll talk about that in a later episode, just to give you a chance to see if you see what I'm talking about. But I find it interesting that she paints such a great picture of Audubon County, since that's who Audubon is. He was a painter that painted birds. I think we've all heard reference at least sometime in our lifetime about the Audubon Society. And I learned, I didn't know he was from Haiti and grew up on a sugar cane plantation and how he came to enjoy birds and and outdoor life and, and such. But she is so tied to nature and just, I think, as a product of, of her growing up. She goes on and just talks about the origin of of her name, the Mati. I have a hard time. I really have to concentrate on that. And I know there's another pronunciation. You could also use the French pronunciation, which is Matisse. If you're doing um, the book on Libby or Audible as an audiobook, she does use the French pronunciation of it. If you're using like the English pronunciation, it's like me and then T, like I'm wearing a T shirt. Me T. I love how she is so proud of who she is and where she has come from. Very humble beginnings. Her family life was not always unicorns and rainbows, as we say, but she owns the struggles, and she owns the the good moments as well. And I'm enjoying, and maybe just because I'm kind of a history nerd, learning the history of these things. And the fact that she refers to Webster's Dictionary oh, just makes me love her all the more. <laughs> I really love the history around it, too, because it helps create like context yes. for the story, and it helps give background that we may not always know exists. And I think if I come back to you talking about the Autobahn Society, honestly, I don't think I had any clue, any background on that. No. Like, at all. No. So that was something that was uber interesting to kind yeah. of, like, learn about. I yeah, was like, oh, a wait a second. Sure. Yeah. 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 Had no idea that there was a county anywhere in the United States named after him. I'm kind of a little history nerd, so anybody else out there with me? It's fascinating, and it enriches the story to know. It just helps me paint more of a complete picture of where she came from and just more about her. I am, I think by the time she comes in April, 
I'm just going to feel like she's my best friend. Doesn't that happen with all of our authors? I know, but they are our best friends. We right. do get their phone numbers. Shh, that's a secret. <laughs> Please take that out. <laughs> so that passage that Jane read us was on page 20 to 21. It is chapter two. If you want to dive in and kind of explore that passage more, other than what Jane and I just delivered... Please dive in. That's where it is. That's where you can find it. The other thing that's really kind of great about this book is you could read it in order. Mm -hmm. You could read it in parts. You could read it out of order. Adam last week talked about with our book club, we've actually read the book out of order. Yes. It's a good exercise in flexibility. And to make the point that for those instructors who want to use part of it, you can do that and make sense of it. You don't have to read from page one to page 200 and something or however many pages there are. That's going to be it for Jane and I today. Please make sure you listen to Let's Talk Big on Outcast OCCR, Owens Community College Radio, as well as the Owens Outcome Student Media Center YouTube channel. You can also find the episodes on our website, owens.edu slash humanities slash read. Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep talking big. Join us again for Let's Talk Big, The Big Read with Jane Berger and Jen Hazel. Oh.